it was one of the most powerful quakes Turkey had ever seen. More than 50,000 people died. The scale of the destruction was almost impossible to comprehend. Back in February, I was reporting on the ground in the hours and days and weeks afterwards, hearing people's stories. People who'd lost not just relatives, but entire families. Millions were jolted awake at 4.17 a.m. when the first earthquake hit. Many were killed where their bodies were found, still in their beds. Another quake, hours later, brought fresh damage. But should advanced new technology have given people more time to escape, a system which was already supposed to be working successfully? Here in California, Google has spent years creating an earthquake warning system designed to alert people before an earthquake strikes. It works on any Android phone. That's about 80% of all of the phones in Turkey. And this is Google's explainer on how it works. Android phones have these tiny accelerometers built into them, which can sense earthquakes. People will now be able to have their phones become part of this network of mini seismometers looking for earthquakes around the world. We call this the Android Earthquake Alert System. When the phone detects an earthquake, it sends a message back to Google servers. When enough phones do this, Google can pinpoint the epicenter and send out an earthquake warning. This is what millions of people in Turkey in theory got before the earthquake struck. And so you'll hear it go. Um, it looks like this and it says drop, cover and hold. So it's pretty loud. It's pretty loud. It's this loud. is Micah Berman the product manager for the system at Google. He explains how earthquakes move through the ground relatively slowly compared to a message near instantly reaching your phone. So the farther you are from the epicenter of the earthquake, the more warning time we're able to give you generally because we've detected it at the epicenter and if you're farther away, we're racing the speed of light and the speed of motion through the ground. The speed of light wins by more and more and more the farther you get away from the epicenter of the earthquake. So sometimes it might be a second or a fraction of a second. Sometimes it might be 20 or 30 seconds. Sometimes it might be 50 or 60 seconds. It depends on all of those factors together, how much warning we're able to give you. Um, could this save lives? Like, I mean, has it saved lives? I certainly hope so. And that's our intent is to be able to give users as much warning as we possibly can to help uh, them protect themselves, their families, their loved ones. Uh, so this uh, is a core service of Android. It was two or three in the morning. I was sound asleep. This is a Google advert about the system. A man talks of the worries of living in an earthquake zone and the comfort of having the service. The notification said there was an earthquake. It said how big it was and how far it was. It's one less thing I have to worry about. Here's the crucial thing. It works automatically on any Android phone. You don't need to turn it on. If your phone was on Do Not Disturb, it would override that. Exactly the same behavior that you just heard, no matter what state your phone is in. It, you should get that warning. Yes. The company claims that is exactly what happened in Turkey. Millions of people received a warning. So our system did activate for both of the major events in Turkey, as well as for a number of aftershocks. I was really puzzled by that claim because I was here on the ground in Turkey in the hours and the days and the weeks after the earthquake and nobody had ever mentioned in any interview with me receiving an alert before the earthquake. So we decided to go to three cities that had been impacted, Adana, Osmaniye and Iskenderun. They're each between 70 and 150 kilometers from the epicenter, so enough of a distance away to get a warning. And I simply asked people whether they'd received an alert. Everyone you're about to hear from has an Android phone. So when the earthquake happened, the mm -hmm. first one that happened in the night, mm -hmm. did you get this alert on your phone at the time of the earthquake when no. you were sleeping? No. And what about, so it looked like that, and it makes a sound. No. No. No. Quake this. No. 
Ali Jan lost his grandmother when the hospital building she was being treated in collapsed. Did your Android phone, did it send you a, an image, a warning? Did it make a sound? Did it send you any kind of alert at 4.17 that that earthquake was starting? No. Nothing? Nothing. Right after the earthquake, I went to Google to check the magnitude. That's so this why. came upon Google, but this, look, your screenshot is 4.32. Yeah. 4.32, yeah. So this was long after the earthquake happened. Yeah. We did find a few people who had heard it before, but not for the first major earthquake. Sounds like this? No. no. One time it uh, came to me. Bizarre. Yeah. And then uh, in the big earthquake, later. The big earthquake, nothing. OK. We spoke to dozens of people on the streets. Most people hadn't even heard of Google's system. No, no. No? no. In one of Iskenderun's tented communities, where displaced people are still living in the intense heat, it was the same story. Funda lost 25 members of her family. She showed me tattoos of some of their names, including her sister and nephews. Ama çarşıdan itibaren her yer yıkıldı. Binlerce insan. Binlerce insan. Hiç abartmıyorum. Binlerce. İnsanların, ölen insanların üzerlerinden atlayarak biz hareket ettik. Ve ben yeğenlerimi sırtımda taşıyarak mezarlığa götürdüm yani. Ben mesela eniştemle e, yeğenimi birbirlerine sarılarak gömdük. Öylelerdi çünkü. Burunlarında, ağızlarında, kanlarla. So you, you didn't receive any alert, nothing on your phone? Hiçbir şekilde mesaj gelmedi. Yok. Hayır. Kesinlikle gelmedi. In all three cities, despite our attempts, we didn't find one person, not one, who got a warning for the first earthquake. Despite putting this evidence to Google, the company was insistent that it had worked. How sure are you that, it, firstly, it did fire, and secondly, that it actually got to, to people during this earthquake? I'm as, as sure as we can be that the system activated and that we did send alerts. It's possible, you know, that given th all of the, like, the massive impact of the first event, that this just quietly happened in the background while users were really paying attention to lots of other things. At the end of the day, I think that's probably the most likely explanation, is that users were focused on something else and might not even have noticed if they got the alert. Like I say, in every I mean, event... All, all, all I can say, though, is, is that the team has just talked to dozens and dozens of people. Yeah. If they had got advanced warning of this earthquake, yeah. you would have expected people to have remembered this. So I, I guess that's the question I have, I have for you. Do you like, I unfortunately a, have the could, same question. What could the reason be? I, I mean, I think the largely the theories, you know, that I've I've hypothesized with you today, but these are all theories. Another oddity is the lack of social media response to the alert. Usually when there's an earthquake uh, and, I, you know, recent ones include Pakistan. There was one in Indonesia recently that affected Malaysia. Social media sort of lights up yeah. with all of these comments saying, I just got an alert. The thing that was unusual about Turkey is that that didn't happen. What, why do you think that was the case? You know, my guess is as good as anyone's. I don't have any, uh, you know, particular insight into why. But I don't, I don't have a resounding answer for, I guess, why we haven't seen more reaction on social media to that particular event. After this interview, Google compiled a list of 13 social media posts that they'd found trawling Turkish and English social media platforms and gave them to the BBC. Google said they hadn't contacted these people, so we did our own research and tracked them down to speak to them. Take this man, Ridvan Gunturk, who tweeted that he got a warning. We messaged him, but he didn't respond. But I did manage, through his social media posts, to find out what gym he worked at. And by contacting him there, he agreed to be interviewed. Around 4 a.m. in the morning, when the quake hit, I instantly woke up. When I stood up, my mom, my dad, and my sister were all awake. My sister had crouched down in fear. She couldn't even move. Afterwards, I turned my phone off Do Not Disturb, but there was no warning. No buzzing or audio warning came before the first quake. Ridvan's tweet was actually referring to a later earthquake. The same goes for almost all of the others. Two of the social media posts did claim to be referring to the first earthquake. 
one person didn't message us back despite multiple attempts to contact them. Another wrote a long account about how they did get a warning a few seconds before the first earthquake. However, they wouldn't give us their name and couldn't be certain of their memory of events. Google's early warning service is in dozens of countries, and you could argue that an imperfect system is better than none at all. However, there are alternatives. Here in California, earthquakes are detected with seismometers placed near faults in the ground. This is one we recently visited. Japan has a similar system. And in Mexico, there are public sirens. You can hear them here as people file into the streets away from buildings during a quake in 2017. Google says that its system is supplemental, that it's not a replacement for a government-run service. But it's not quite as simple as that. Harold Tobin is a professor of earth sciences and director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. You know, these systems are extremely new, right? They're at the cutting edge of what's possible. So, you know, Google gives us a lot of information that sometimes is really great for our convenience. This is not about inconveniences. This is really about something that is a, um, that is a, a matter of life and death. And, you know, one of the questions it raises is, is there potential that in some country, many countries potentially around the world, if Google says they're delivering this service, then there will be less likelihood that the civil authorities in that country would spend the money to do an earthquake early warning system when in fact maybe there should be one. It's essential then to understand how well these systems work. Have you spoken to anyone who, who got it? I have not, no. Though I, I don't speak Turkish and uh, you know, I'm not in Turkey, so. But has, has, Google spoken to, has Google spoken to anyone? I don't know. Well, well any, any more data you can share with us about how, how, how it fired on that first earthquake, we would, we would really love, and that would be yeah. great. Google didn't share any of their data with the BBC, though it did send this statement after the interview. During a devastating earthquake event, numerous factors can affect whether users receive, notice, or act on a supplemental alert, including specific characteristics of the earthquake and the availability of internet connectivity. I feel that if you are delivering an essential sort of life safety, public safety piece of information, then you have a responsibility to be transparent about how it works and how well it works. This is what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about an anecdote of, of it's popped up here and there. It's, it's did it, th these are intended as blanket, you know, um, uh, warning systems. That's the whole point. We can't be sure that no one got this alert but we can be sure that many people didn't. There was no blanket warning, a warning that could have saved lives.